Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about the multiverse. This is a very big topic and surprisingly not just a fictional topic, kind of like our previous videos on uh, dimensionality and flat earth. It's something that's on my head pretty often because like you, I read a lot of comics, I watch a lot of TV and anime and stuff like that, and almost every single piece of media gets this completely scientifically inaccurate and wrong. And of all shows, Rick and Morty is probably the most accurate example of how a multiverse actually would work if it is a real thing. Because this is a topic that kind of blurs the line between science and fiction. There's a large number of scientists that view it as a pseudoscience or perhaps at best a philosophical topic instead of a scientific one. And it's often also thought of as being impossible to test, therefore unverifiable, and therefore literally by its definition supernatural or unscientific. On top of that, the reasons that some physicists believe that a multiverse exists are primarily oddities of high-level math when it comes to physics. They are not things that they tested or observed or built a portal gun. It's more of a mathematical model of how everything works around us. And the best example I can give of this is the Dirac equation. A physicist Paul Dirac uh, famously wrote an equation, and this equation since it involved uh, imaginary numbers, which are which it's just a fancy way to say polar numbers. They're real. They're not imaginary. I promise you. Uh, had a positive answer and a negative answer. Uh, so it was like let's say negative five and five, right? Scientists immediately were like, yeah, five is the answer. Perfect. And his Dirac is like, yeah, but what about negative five? Negative five is also an answer. And they're like, Dirac, that's silly. That's just an oddity of math. You just got a, a little garbo output right there. Don't worry about it. We all know negative five can't be real. And Dirac Rock was really hard on this and he was like, no, it's real. It was an anti, uh, is anti-matter is what he was predicting. He was saying that one equation resulted in matter, but it also resulted in equal amount of anti-matter. And all the scientists said, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And Dirac was really hard in his math. And he says, no, my math is right. Anti-matter is real. And as we know quite well today, anti-matter is a real thing. And Paul Dirac was of course correct. A similar type of thing happens in the higher level mathematics when it comes to quantum mechanics or predictions for gravity or strong and weak forces and a lot of things that you would use in quantum mechanics or theoretical physics. You, you get a lot of answers that do indicate that there should be other universes and there's a couple of different theories on how this would pan out. I'm going to go over them briefly before we get into the implications. Number one is you have a very simple infinite space universe. The whole thing that scientists tell you that our universe or everything around us you know exploded from the Big Bang and went outward and there's an edge to it all that's nonsense it just goes on forever the space never ends there's more stuff in space and the further you go the more stuff there is so with all those weird combinations everything would be possible there's the cyclical universe theory and that we do start with the big bang it blows up and contracts right back in and blows up again but it'll be a little different because it's random and it doesn't blow up the same every single time but eventually we'll repeat exactly the same cycle and sometimes it'll be different there is a quantum mechanics theory this one's a little bit complicated that predicts multiple universes all happening at the same time stacked on top of each other because if you get deep into quantum mechanics you'll know that quantum mechanics doesn't predict anything happening 100% of the time like uh, gravity you know you drop the apple the apple falls right that's or you know electricity it flows one way magnets pull together quantum mechanics is like well if you if you do this thing with this quark you know half the time a will happen a quarter of the time b will happen and another quarter of the time c will happen and you'll, you'll ask the quantum mechanic uh, physicist most likely and you'll be like well how can i tell, tell you which one is going to happen he'll be like i don't know you just have to do it. it it's one of those things and these are the exact probabilities there's a unique theory that when you do something or there's some sort of quantum interaction, let's just say 50-50, A or B, right? A and B happen at exactly the same time, but in different universes. So every quantum interaction is a interaction between universes or a split between the two. There's the hologram theory, which is a, it's a mathematical model that it's a really unique one because holograms can reflect a near infinite amount of information. So even if you call a hologram in a half and a quarter and a third, the surface area that is still there will reflect and project and predict the rest of the universe around it, which is really strange. We're not talking about hologram man either or any of the weird 90s stuff. It's, it's more of a 
mathematical hologram model. And finally, you can find yourself in higher dimensionality theory, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, whatever many dimensions, which is M theory or membrane theory or string theory stuff, which is like one or zero dimensions where strings vibrate and that creates all the universes. And it, there's a lot of different theories about it. But for now, for the purpose of this video, let's stick with the more traditional membrane theory or layered universe theory. And the best way I like to think about this is if the entire universe was a flat sheet of paper and all the information on it was just right there, you could put another universe really, really close to it, like putting two pieces of paper on top of each other and then another and another and another. When you get a big fat stack of paper, that could be like a whole stack of universes very tightly packed or perhaps like a tiramisu or any other kind of layered cake in that we all exist so close to each other but not quite touching. And in all likelihood, in this theory, the universe right next door to our own would be identical to our own or so infinitesimally small difference that you, you wouldn't be able to measure it in any way. However, where we are in the stack is ultimately random. And when it comes to big numbers like infinity, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is very meaningless. Where most of you are probably familiar with this theory is watching movies, reading comic books, TV shows, because movie studios use this to show different possibilities for each character. What if Superman was evil? What if, uh, you know, what if the Green Lantern did never got his superpowers? What would he be like? And you can see this in the Arrowverse or the Arrow Flash crossovers with DC where you have good Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow, and then you have evil Oliver Queen raised in, you know, Nazi America or whatever, the Black Arrow. And it's kind of a cheap way for shows to make interesting content and reuse the same actors so they don't have to pay anybody extra. Marvel and DC Comics also use this to reboot their comics ever so slightly differently from time to time to test the waters and try new things. And they, it's a way to where you can say, okay, well this comic happens in a different universe and you don't invalidate the fans or hurt the feelings of people that were really attached to one set of comics. Hence all the hundreds of different versions of comics and endings and weird things and how many people get the Infinity Gauntlet and goofy stuff like that. Some shows or, you know, types of media will use this as a historical fiction like Man in the High Tower where Germany won World War II. Even anime started using this recently with Steins Gate and you had, uh, in the Full Metal Alchemist movie, they, they go from their fantasy universe to ours, I think, pre-World War II. And as crazy as it sounds, literally all of these are valid possible examples of multiverse theory. They're, they're not that scientifically inaccurate other than that they're just plain improbable. The reason that they're improbable is because we're talking about infinity here. And infinity is a big, big concept. In today's video, it's gonna have a lot of meaning, so I'm just gonna run through the math on infinity super quickly. Infinite means limitless. Uh, in mathematics, we often use infinite to represent very, very big, too big of a number to keep track of, such a big number it destroys everything, but for today's purposes, we're gonna use it as truly endless without limit. So when you look at things like infinity plus infinity, infinity, infinity times infinity, also infinity, you can, but a goofy one is infinity minus infinity, also infinity. Infinity minus infinity minus infinity minus infinity, still infinity, super weird. Half infinity, infinity. Uh, quarter of infinity, still infinity. It's, it's really hard to whittle down infinity and make it anything less than infinite. So when it comes to shows and movies and media like this, it would be unlikely that our next door universe is so much like Earth that all versions of ourselves still existed. We were all still the same people, same parents, just had different experiences like movie, like, oh, this guy's superpower, this guy doesn't, he's a baker, he's a carpenter, blah, blah, blah. It's more likely that the next universe over would have no humans at all or be a toxic wasteland or there would be no Earth or you would have sentient dinosaurs ruling the planet, no oxygen to breathe, the super bacteria that killed anything. But to be honest, all of those crazy scenarios, which there are no people in, are kind of generous because every possible universe also means every single possible combination of physics. So you're gonna say, now hold up now, what are you talking about? If universes can be infinite, so can the different values for our fundamental forces. Gravity might be uh, you know, 9.8 meters per second squared here, and it might be two meters per second squared there, and you can have different charges and fundamental forces for electricity and magnetism, atomic, ionic, strong, weak, all those different sort of forces that make our universe work. You could have different numbers for them, which would lead to different strange combinations. You could have totally new forces altogether or forces missing, like a universe with no gravity, 
and of course these would lead to really weird, unimaginable, unpredictable scenarios that if you were to travel here you would all die almost instantly. You'd probably get ripped apart by the fundamental forces of the universe because the things that hold you together no longer matter there. Uh, in, in this kind of crazy scenario, it's equally valid to have cartoon universes, zero-dimensional universes. Every TV show is its own equally real universe where that is happening somewhere. It's a, it's a big crazy concept and that's why I think Rick and Morty does this very well because Rick and Morty touches on this more than any other media by showing as more abstract universes than any other media. I mean there's a scene where Rick and Morty they're just like running from portal to port as almost every episode's like this and they just go from one crazy universe to another with telephones and dogs and, and abstract art and just really impossible weird kind of things. But in an actual scientific multiverse theory, all of those things kind of have to exist. In Rick and Morty, Rick has two great inventions. Two inventions that put him on a level beyond anybody else. The first one is obviously the portal gun. The portal gun is probably not realistic, or perhaps that's what makes it so great, because it would take an infinite amount of energy to breach from our universe to the very next one over, much less all the ones in all of existence. Like, the amount of energy that it would require to take a re to make a real functional portal is, is mind-blowing. And by infinite, I mean you could get every star and black hole in our galaxy and put them together, and it's, it still probably wouldn't be enough to, to generate that much energy. It's, it's ludicrous. So he built a gun that can make that much energy, stabilize it, close it without destroying everything, and move universe to universe problem free. But I think his most underrated invention, which most people on this show wouldn't think about, is that the portal gun is able to sort and categorize an infinite number of universes. It's also able to automatically determine which ones are safe for him to visit, and I mean safe relatively in that he doesn't step out and uh, there's no there, there's no like weak force in your atoms here and you just fly apart super fast, or he doesn't step out and get instantly roasted by a gamma ray burst or something like that. All the universes have roughly the same physics as ours, and you you can walk around and travel and you know do cartoon hijinks in. But Rick can travel around safely from universe to universe without getting destroyed. They're all labeled, they're all categorized, they're easy to get to. That's an impressive invention because you just invented a machine that sorts and categorizes infinity. There shouldn't even be enough labels to do that, but his machine does that somehow. However, this type of infinity leads to some strange and illogical stuff, which is also kind of the crux of the plot of the show. If this scientific theory is correct, then that means that there are an infinite number of universes 100% identical to the one that we are in right now. There are also universes where there's no such thing as pizza, and an infinite number of universes where there's no such thing as pizza. But uh, the less probable something is, its infinity is proportionally smaller than other infinities, which is a weird concept. For example, if I were to play Dungeons and Dragons, and in that game you'll roll a, let's say, 10-sided die, kind of like, kind of like this one I got uh, from a fan, Brimstone. This one's got 10 sides, you know, 10 through 1, whatever. And you'll roll this die according to, let's say, the quantum mechanics theory, Every single universe has one, has an answer. Like there's a universe where I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. However, there's more universes where I don't get a 10 than I do, even though all of them are equal to infinity. And I, 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 we're approaching the calculus zone here. We're approaching the part where I have to express, express this with some abstract mathematics. But the point of this is that your infinities can be proportional to each other, oddly, but infinity minus infinity is still infinity. So let's loop this back to Rick and Morty. Let's pull this back to Sanity Town. One of the main plot points of the show is that Rick is a terrible person. He's uh, nihilistic, amoral, destructive, violent sometimes. He has no remorse, no compassion, and Morty's really naive. The difference between the two is that for Rick, for most of his life, the concept of the multiverse has been real, tangible and something he can interact with and touch with and that leads to his nihilism because Rick knows that he could destroy a billion earths he could just make some big machine snap his fingers and one billion earths which would be like a trillion ten trillion people die instantly horrible brutal deaths 
But in the grand scheme of the universe, it means nothing. There's still an infinite number of Earths left to destroy. He couldn't destroy them all. He couldn't create uh, enough to uh, impact infinity. You, you can't, actually. Rick could sacrifice his life to be a great hero and save a whole universe. But that's one universe in a sea of infinite universes. And, you know, you save that one, but you lose an infinite number of others. There's an infinite number of universes that collapse or fail or have horrible things happen. And in the grand scheme of the multiverse, it doesn't make any difference. In one universe, Rick's wife dies. In the other one, she's alive. He can just go snatch her. In one universe, his family is dead horribly. And why, you see this in the show, the Cronenberg episode. Well, I screwed this one up. It doesn't matter. Let's just go to another universe where we've got a completely identical family and nothing matters. When you have this sort of mindset and when you really accept the fact that there are infinite replacements for your loved ones and for your values and everything that are important, everything ultimately becomes meaningless. Even the biggest, most important thing you can think of is meaningless in the face of the multiverse, which leads to Rick's depressing, aggressive, and nihilistic points of view. Self-destructive, as a matter of fact. He's depressed. That's kind of the point of the show. Uh, so, infinity is a big topic. Multiverses are complicated. I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. That's enough food for thought. Let's do three take-homes for today. Let's, let's try to reduce this down to something a little bit more sane. Number one is that multiverse theory is bigger than our ability to comprehend. It's, it's really, really really hard to understand the true implications of infinity, much less infinity when applied to infinite universes. Number two is that almost every movie or show just kind of uses this as a cheap way to reuse actors. There are really more what-if scenarios and very few of them have any realistic multiverse type implications. And number three, this is by no means proven to be real. It's a scientific theory that some physicists accept, some reject, some think is great, some think is horrible. And uh, even if this is real, it's not likely that we're going to be able to travel to other universes anytime soon, if at all, ever. So treat the universe that you're in here today like you're one and only. Because it is. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.